What's going on my fellow Belmonts, it's the Mad Belmont here, and today I have a doozy of a video for you, because I'm going to be talking about my top 10 horror games of all time. I cannot release a video during the week of Halloween. I know I said that I was going to release it on Halloween, but depending on how good this thing comes out in the editing, I may just release it early. So if you're seeing it on the 30th, what's up if you're seeing it on halloween what's up but anyway so yeah we're gonna get into my top 10 horror games of all time here because i talk about horror a lot on this channel but i haven't told you what is my top 10 horror games of all time and why that is so let's get right into the list shall we first up here at number 10 is siren this is a survival horror stealth game that initially released on the PlayStation 2 back in the 2000s, and it later came to PS3 in a reimagining in the form of Siren Blood Curse. So, this game right here, the reason why I have this game here at number 10 is because, for one, it introduced me to Japanese horror. I had no idea what Japanese horror even was before I played this game, but... After playing this game and getting that kind of feel for how this game is, it made me open my mind to more Japanese horror video games, like Fatal Frame, for instance. I love that series, and I wouldn't have gotten into that if it wasn't for Siren here. And another reason why I have this game here on this list is because I feel like this is survival horror in its purest form, is this game right here. You have no weapons, you have absolutely no way to defend yourself. You just have to survive and get out of these certain situations that you find yourself in throughout the game as you go through the different scenarios within the game. And all of them are super creepy. The music and the atmosphere is super just creepy and eerie. And it gives you an uncomfortable feeling the entire time that you're playing it. And so, with all that being said, that is why I have this game here. It's because I feel like more people need to be talking about this game. I feel like more people need to respect this game as a horror game. Because it is, to me, one of the best horror games ever made. Coming in at number 9 here is The Suffering. This is another PS2 horror game. And... This game right here sees you playing as a prisoner and you have to escape this prison as everything's going to hell and back. And this game right here perfectly makes you feel alone. It makes you feel isolated because you are in this high maximum security prison out in the middle of nowhere and all of a sudden things are going to crap and you just have to get out. So, that is why I love this game so much, is because of that atmosphere and that tension. Because there are a lot of horror games that make you feel those things. You know, they have a lot of tension, they have a lot of creepy atmosphere to them. But, there are some that don't make you feel nearly as isolated as I feel that this game does. Yeah, sure, the prison itself, it's a pretty big prison. And, yeah, sure, there's area to explore outside of the prison, sure, but you still feel isolated. You feel like you are alone in this creepy, just weird situation, and you feel like there's no way out throughout the entire game. And so, you're desperately going through different levels of the prison, going outside the prison, and... You're going to the beach trying to find some way to get home, basically. So, yeah, that is why I love this game so much. And not to mention also the fact that the soundtrack for this game is incredible. From the times when you're just running around in the prison or outside the prison to especially the music when enemies start to appear and you start to get into combat oh it gets me pumped every time i hear it so that is why the suffering comes in here at number nine coming in at number eight here we have my introduction 
to the Alone in the Dark franchise with Alone in the Dark The New Nightmare. This is a game that released on the PS1, Dreamcast, PC, and I believe that is it for this game. It released on a bunch of different platforms in the 90s, in the late 90s, and it is a fantastic survival horror game on the PlayStation 1. If you are someone that loves you, not only the other things that I've mentioned with the other two games already on this list, like atmosphere and tension and a feeling of isolation, but if you really like good creature design, I'm telling you right now, I think that you're going to get some of the best creature design in this game because when I played this for the first time, I didn't know what Alone in the Dark even was, you know? I didn't play the PC game back in the 90s, back in 92. I, I was three years from coming into this world at the time. So, for me to get this experience with this game was, I think, the best thing for me because it gave me something that I was already familiar with because it does play a lot like those classic PS1 survival horror games like a Resident Evil or a Silent Hill, but it does have its own feel to it with its atmosphere, with its tension, with its music, with its characters, and like I said, I think that the creature design is some of the best parts about this game because all the creatures here, when they came out, I immediately jumped back which I had done before, but the thing that I never did before was I'd jump, I'd pause the game, I would just dr uh, set the controller down and just breathe for five minutes because of how scary and how creepy and how beautifully built the scares are in this game because of the creature designs. I love everything about this game, and if you have not played Alone in the Dark, the new nightmare if you're gonna play any alone in the dark game i honestly would definitely recommend you play this one because this one to me is the best alone in the dark game i haven't played the remake of alone in the dark yet but for right now this is the best alone in the dark game and you absolutely need to play it coming in at number seven here is outlast this is a game that shocked me all right so I first got a PlayStation 4 in 2014. Now, this game had actually been out by that time, and it had kind of made the rounds on Twitch and YouTube and everything like that, but I didn't know about it, all right? I wasn't really into looking at horror stuff on YouTube and stuff like that yet. I was still doing research, you know, the old-fashioned way by just looking up on Google, you know, top horror games or newest horror games coming out and going through the Google searches. And so I did a Google search and I found that one of the best indie games of the early 20, te 20 teens, I'll say, was none other than Outlast. And it was a game that had been popping up in article after article after article. And I was going to buy it when I got my PlayStation 4, but luckily I had just so happened to get mine right when it became free for PS Plus, alright? So perfect timing for me, so I downloaded it and I went into it with an open mind. I was just like, you know what, I see this game popping up everywhere, I'm going to give it a shot and see what I think about it. And from the moment I step into the asylum. I was like, oh, I see what they're talking about now. Because from the moment that I stepped into the asylum and started walking around, I knew that I was in for something special. Because even so much as opening a door to me was a hell of a task. Because I was like, I don't know what is going on here. I don't know what is going to happen when I open this door or when I climb through this window or when I climb into this vent, I don't know what's going to happen. And I think that is the reason why this is so high on this list is because it had me on edge from the moment I stepped into the asylum. The only thing that keeps it this low on the list is because that ending, yeah, not the best. But if it wasn't for that ending, it would definitely be higher because 
90% of this game is a masterpiece in building tension naturally at a gradual level and in just keeping the train going and keeping it going faster. This is a beautiful game that if you haven't played it, I definitely recommend it. I will tell you though, you're probably going to be disappointed by that ending. I will just say that much, but if you can forgive that ending, this is definitely a game worth your time. Coming in at number six here on this list is Manhunt. Manhunt. This is a game that I played as a kid because my parents were cool like that. They let me play a lot of games that they probably shouldn't have been letting me play, but... Uh, when I first saw this in the store, I looked at the box art and I seen Rockstar was on there. Rockstar at the time was one of my favorite developers ever. I loved Rockstar. I loved everything they did. But this looked so out of their wheelhouse to me. So naturally, I was curious and I was like, well, what the heck is this, man? Like, this isn't their typical thing like this doesn't look like a Grand Theft Auto or Bully or anything that they were making at the time that you would instantly link them to this didn't look like that so naturally when I saw that I was like oh okay yeah I gotta pick this up so I went and I rented it came home and immediately I was thrown for a loop with this game because it was the complete opposite of what I thought it was. At the time, because I was a kid, I thought it was, you know, a crime game. I thought you were playing as the cops and you were on a manhunt for a serial killer. No, 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 no. You play a prisoner who is basically stuck in a reality TV sort of situation and there's all these super deadly criminals and you've got to basically find your way out you have got to survive against all these super high powered prisoners that are out to kill you basically and this game right here even though it didn't look like it was a game that would be scary right you look at this game and you're like that doesn't look all that scary, but when you play this game, oh my god, it's one of the most frightening games that you can possibly play, because this game right here is very keen on your survival instincts, it will test your uh, decision making, and it will test your stealth abilities for sure, because this is a survival horror stealth game, much like a siren for example, and this game the only reason why it's not higher on this list is because of the controls. I feel like the controls have not aged all that well. But other than that, this game is one of the most disturbing games that I have ever played in my entire life. Viewer, beware with this game, okay? This is one that you absolutely cannot play if you are squeamish, if you are someone who is very sensitive to blood and gore because there's a lot of it in here if you are someone who has a kid you cannot play this game with them okay so keep that in mind before you play this game but if you if that still sounds good to you if you still want to play this game go for it you will have one of the most disturbing times of your life playing this game right here i'm telling you coming in here at number five is fear First Encounter Assault Recon. This is a game that came out for the PC, for the Xbox 360 and the PS3 in 2008. And I played it back in the day on the 360 because it was a first person shooter. And at the time I was very hooked and addicted on to first person shooters. If you were an FPS game, I was all over it. Alright? And so... I played this not knowing what to expect. I thought it was going to be, you know, some type of super tactical shooter because that's what it kind of looked like when I looked at the back of the box. But I didn't know what this mysterious girl on the front of the box was. And then I come home and it combines first person shooter with a psychological horror game. 
and it mishmashes them together into a beautiful symphony that deserves this number five spot here on this list. If you like, okay, now I'm gonna have to rewind a little bit here. The PC version and the next up here at number four, we have Condemned Criminal Origins. This is an Xbox 360 launch title. And in this game, you play as Ethan Thomas, an agent with the FBI's serial crime unit. And in this fictional city, it's called Metro, there are an increase, a surge, if you will, in both serial murders and assaults perpetrated by vagrants and your job is to figure out if these two are connected because your character that you play as Ethan is convinced that they are so you have to piece together if they are not and let me tell you okay this game is incredible for a 360 launch title I was blown away I got my 360 in 2007 and I first got this game, I'd say about 2008, right before my first 360 bit the dust. And let me tell you, oh my gosh, this game. I was so blown away because it kind of takes elements from two of my favorite movies in their respective genres. It takes Silence of the Lambs. Okay, which is one of, one of my favorite horror movies ever made. I love that movie. And then it takes Elements of Seven, which is one of my favorite thriller movies ever made. Crime thrillers. And it kind of mishmashes the two together. You have the atmosphere, the tension, the storytelling, the character work of Silence of the Lambs. And then you have all the crime and the thriller stuff that Seven is good for. And... It also takes a little bit of its storytelling, and then it just mashes it together. And you would not think that that works, but let me tell you, it works. And it works so good here, because it has a brilliant sense of atmosphere. And even though there's no, like, super de duper -de creatures like you would see in the Silent Hill or a Resident Evil or anything like that, it is still one of the creepiest games you will ever play in your entire life. If you have not played this game, let me tell you, this is one surefire good reason to go on to the Xbox Store on Modern Xboxes. I do still believe that it is part of the backwards compatibility program. Also, you can get a physical copy of it and Please, please play this game. I'm telling you, this game is so good. It deserves to be on this list, and it deserves to be this high on this list. And when you play it, you'll see why I say that. You'll see. Trust me. Coming in here at number three is Dead Space 2. This is the sequel to the first game that I talked about in my Xbox 360 Horror Games video. You can see that right here if you click the card up in the corner. And when I talked about Dead Space in that video, everything that I said, the atmosphere, the tension, everything about that is better here in this game. You do play as Isaac Clarke again, and you are tasked with going and searching yet another space station, and you are to uh, run into the Necromorphs yet again. And this game, I don't know how... It managed to do everything better than the first game, but it did. It managed to take that creepy sense of isolation that the first game did, and it just ramped it up to 20 somehow in this game with the music, with the enemies, the Necromores being even nastier in this game somehow, and... I absolutely adore this game. I first played this game back in 2011. I pre-ordered it back then because I was such a huge fan of the first game that I had to jump on the hype train for this game. And when I first played it, this is one of the games. This is why this is in the top three horror games for me. This is one of those horror games that physically made me so damn scared. So damn scared. That I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep for about a week after I played this game. 
because it was just that creepy, that terrifying, that stupid scene with the eye and oh my god, I no, I can't, I can't, I can't, I just can't. So yeah, this game is literally everything that the first game is, but better. And if you have not played either one of these games, then you need to do that. Whether it is through the originals or through the remake of the first Dead Space on modern consoles, you need to play some Dead Space. It is a brilliant franchise. This game in particular is brilliant. I think that you all will love and enjoy it if you have not played it. So, yeah, that is why Dead Space is right here in the top three. Coming in at number two here on this list is a game in Capcom's flagship Resident Evil franchise, and it is none other than Resident Evil 2 from 1998 on the original PlayStation. In this game, you play either as Leon S. Kennedy or Claire Redfield, and your job is to go through the outskirts of Raccoon City, as well as going through the Raccoon City Police Department, the sewers, an underground laboratory, and a few other places to try to escape this zombie-infested city. And the reason why this game is on here, and not the remake from 2019, is because I have more fond memories with this game than I do with the remake, because this game right here, Resident Evil 2, 1998, it was the second horror game I ever played. I played the original Resident Evil trilogy as my first three games, this one being my second one, and this game took everything that I thought was safe, a cityscape, and a police department, an underground laboratory. I thought that all this stuff would be safe from zombies and these weird creatures that have no skin whatsoever and look absolutely nasty and horrifying. And it just infested all of those places with those things and said, have fun. Well, I had a lot of fun because this game scarred me as a kid when I played it. I played it in 2002. I was just getting into horror video games at the time after getting into horror in the movie space. And this game right here, it scarred me so bad with so many different moments in it from the moment that the liquor is revealed to you. The moment uh, right at the beginning of the game when Leon and Claire wreck their car and you've got all these zombies just surrounding you to in the underground laboratory whenever you find out about the plant monsters. There's so many different things in this game. The, the fights with Birkin, there's so many different things that I can talk about in this game that absolutely disturbed me and kept me from having a consistent sleep schedule for about a month after I played it, yeah, that's how bad this game got me. That, that, when a game messes with your sleep schedule that bad, that's how you know you've got a good horror game on your hands. And this is no exception. I absolutely love this game. I play it every single year. I'm actually doing a playthrough of it right now as I'm recording this video. So, yeah. I absolutely love this game, and it deserves to be up here in the top two for sure. Coming in at number one is a game that should be no surprise to any of you. It is Silent Hill 2. In this game, you play as James Sunderland, a man who is back into the town of Silent Hill when he receives a letter from his wife, Mary. But the catch is that Mary died of a disease three years before he got this letter. So your job is to go into the town of Silent Hill and explore around and find out if James's wife is actually dead or not. And this game right here, I first played it back in 2002 when I got into horror video games. It was a game that I had played right after getting into the original Resident Evil trilogy and I had already played the first game beforehand. and. This game had blown me away with 
just how good storytelling it has, just how good of a character cast that it has. It blew me away with its environmental storytelling. It blew me away with literally everything about it, okay? The atmosphere, the tension, the creature design, everything about this game just screams perfection. And it is a game that ever since I first played it back in 2002, it still is up here in my head, living rent free up here because of the story and how it's told, because of the fact that it has multiple endings that adds to the replay value, and the fact that each one of those endings could be the real deal ending. Like, everything about this game is perfection to me. I absolutely love it. It's one of my top 10 games of all time. Like, it's that good to me because of the fact that it is so well constructed. I call this game like an onion. The more you play it, the more you get out of it. As you play it, you start to peel back the layers and you just get more and more and more out of it. And... That is why I love this game so much, I care about this game so much, and that is why at first I was cautious about the remake of it, but after playing what I've played of that remake, I can tell you right now, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with what Bloober Team is able to do there, because they have captured the essence of what made this game from 2001 so great, and I cannot wait to talk about this game. The 2001 game and the remake from this year over on the Super Retro Force channel because I'm doing reviews on both of them. And oh man, this game it just means so much to me. Silent Hill as a franchise means a lot to me too. And there's no way that I could put this game anywhere but here in this top spot because of the impact that it's made on me. So that is why Silent Hill 2 from 2001 is up here at the top this is why it is my favorite horror game of all times because of the fact that it has managed to worm its way up into my mind with its storytelling and its characters and it's stuck there ever since then and I play this game as often as I possibly can because of that there you have it folks those are my top 10 horror games of all time what do you think of my list? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you agree with some entries on my list? Do you not? Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to discuss it with y'all. And also, as I mentioned during the video, if you want to see some reviews from me, you might want to go on over to my team's channel, The Super Retro Force. We're a team of content creators that are coming together to give you more gaming content to watch on YouTube and it's awesome content too so you might want to give us a sub on over there it's down in the description below along with all of the individual channels for all of my teammates that have individual channels they're all down there all right so with that being said have fun on hunt my fellow Belmonts I will see you in the next video and peace out